welcome back to my channel. I'm in my grandparents' backyard, so it's time for another Ubex Stories. For my new subscribers, Urbex Stories is a series that I created where I talk about abandoned places, I show my photos, my videos, and today I just want to jump right into it because I want to start with an update of a place that I talked in a previous video, the fishing house. If you follow me for some time, you know that I love the fishing house and I have great news. It's finally being restored. It will take more or less three years to finish all the works in the property and maybe, not maybe, I will definitely want to do a video of this place after being restored because I love it so much and I want to see the before and after. So if you want to know the whole history of this place and all the photos, I'm going to leave a link down in the description for a previous video that I did a year ago. So go check it out. Convento de Almiara most known as Mosteiro de Vride, is a monastery convent that is located in a remote place next to the Mondego River. This place is completely overgrown. I barely could walk inside of this place, like the paths. It was full of bushes, plants, trees. Like literally, there's trees growing inside of this place. I don't want to talk too much about this place because I really want to film it. But when I was exploring inside of that place, I saw this wooden elevator that was used to transport foods to the uh, upper levels because the monks didn't leave the room for weeks to pray so they uh, go up with the food to the rooms and it was really crazy to see that because it's, it's still there, a wooden thing after hundreds of years but I also missed a beautiful room that was full of bats I didn't go in because of that but I've seen pictures of the ceiling and it's beautiful so I really want to go there again. Not just because of that but also because I love these historical places. This place is fully overgrown, you barely can see the walls and the rooms inside of it. It's not like much of a video but I really want to document the history because this place has almost a thousand years. Of course it was rebuilt after years but it's still there you know. and no one is doing anything and it's a monument consider a monument so it's crazy for me to see these places like built centuries ago just being abandoned and left forgotten Regimento da Artilharia da Costa Coastal Artillery Regiment of Lisbon it's eight baterias in Portuguese we call it these places Baterias, translated to English, it's batteries, along the coastline of Lisbon. Basically, these places are big trenches built in the mountains to protect Lisbon and the Tejo River. These trenches had tunnels, troop camps, and even these huge cannons called Krupp and others called Vikers. These places were built in 1893 to protect whatever comes into the Tejo River, and these places were used for some years, but after the Second World War, most of them were dismantled and others abandoned. But that's not the crazy part. From what I read online, these guns, these cannons, were never shoot. These posts, these trenches were used, they are functional, but they never used the cannons to protect Lisbon. They were never necessary. I only visit one out of the eight trenches. I'm sorry to interrupt the video, but I had to show you this. Uh, I did this video before I came here. I did this video some weeks ago and I just came here now and I'm near the cannon so it's two batteries that I visit, not one. This is one of the cannons. I'm gonna show you the outside right now. It's a little bit windy so sorry for the wind. This is the cannon. There's three of them. There's one here, one down there. I don't know if you see it and there's one down there I'll show you in a second but this is just massive and crazy literally I'm here with a friend Joanna yo help me I help you. 
Stefan is gonna film this part. I wanna show you something. Jesus Christ! Mentira, tá tudo bem. Okay, so I wanted to show you. It's like, like if I have. Let's put it back on the place. <laughs> Imagine this shooting right now. <laughs> Let's shoot some boats. Thank you. <laughs> this was used to shoot the boats that come on that coastline. The boats come over there or over there? Yeah, Depends that's on the, the sea, that's the, the river. Boat. And yeah, this is one of the, the cannons. Huge and crazy. Okay, I was just talking to my, my friend. And we have to leave. I don't know if you can see that, but some kids are inside of the tunnels because this has tunnels and there's smoke coming out of the tunnel. So we're gonna leave because these kids are just stupid making fire inside. Like you see these things down here and this, this thing, this is uh, from underground, the tunnels underground this place because the only part you can see is this, these cannons and these things. So you literally from the, the sea you cannot see what's in here and these trees are covered these cannons, these huge cannons as you can see. Okay. This is the other cannon. This is the first of the coastline because there's three. One there, one there with my friend, and another here. This is the tunnels you see, is the stairs for the tunnel, and this is for to the air. Uh, comes out and goes in, you know, to, to have air down in the tunnels. But yeah, I don't feel safe right now going to the tunnel, so I'll be back in another time to make a video about this. And from what I know, one of them is a museum, another one it's still working as a military troops camp, and another one was destroyed to build a hospital on that place. The rest are all abandoned. I don't know why they left these places abandoned, but I agree with some people that these places are monuments. They have a lot of history. Most known as Kulina do Eletrico is basically a tram lost in a big hill. And this is very weird because this tram is located more than 200 kilometers from Lisbon. So you may ask why this tram is there just rusting away. It's a very unexplainable story because most people don't know why the reason that the tram is there. But apparently, I'm not sure, don't take this as a fact, but apparently someone bought this tram and put it there to bring more tourism to the area. And there's like a local accommodation place with the same name. So just a weird and interesting story. Okay, so this next place, I already talked about it. I've done, uh, I think, two videos about it. Basically, it's these pottery factories in Portugal. I know a lot of people don't like factories. That's why I don't make uh, more videos about factories. But there's a lot of pottery factories abandoned in Portugal because Portugal was one of the main countries to produce pottery and crockery in the 900s. So I want to talk about this because a lot of people think that these are Chinese things, but most of the time when you see in videos, they are literally Portuguese. It's Portugal made back in the days, made these, these things, little porcelain things, and there's a lot of abandoned factories with this. I've done videos in Portuguese. If you want me to do videos about this type of things in Portugal, I'll be glad to, to do it. But this factory held 300 workers 
and it closed down because Portugal was declining on the sales of these uh, porcelain and crockery things. And in 2001, a lot of factories closed and with the crisis in 2013, almost every factory closed and there's like towns full of these factories because Portugal has this, uh, this powder, this clay dust. There's a lot in Portuguese mountains and underground. So for me, I find this very interesting and seeing all these uh, ceramic things and molds, I just love it. So if you wanna check it out, I'll leave the two videos that I did in the description. One is in Portuguese, one is in English. The Portuguese one has subtitles. All my videos have subtitles. So go down there and check it out. Okay, I'm back into the sun and talking about sun, these next pictures are gonna be with terrible weather, which makes the place more creepy. I've talked about in previous videos that I love sanatoriums. I think they have such crazy history and sad history at the same time. And I love photographing this place because it's really hard to put the, those feelings into photos and it's like a challenge for me, I love it. And this place, it's called Sanatorio Albergeria Grandella and as you can see in the photos, it's ruins. In 1990, this place started to be constructed to receive tuberculosis patients around the area and everyone was hyped about this place because tuberculosis was really big at the time and this was very close to Lisbon, so people were very glad because there was no sanatoriums around the area. There's only one town with a lot of sanatoriums I've talked about in a previous video. It's called Sanatorios do Caramul. It's a town that was built around these sanatoriums and they built them in this high mountain because they thought the, the air was good for tuberculosis, to cure tuberculosis, but Back to the story of this place, the person and society that want to build this place were very rich, they had a lot of buildings in Lisbon and they, when they start constructing this place they didn't have all the money to start and finish so the places stopped halfway. This is what was constructed and this is what, what's left of the place. And to get the money to finish this construction they sell these tickets that cost like five centavos at the old currency of Portugal, but they never finished and this construction, it's like this. But a fun fact about this place is that the society that wanted to build this place, they are called Maquiavencos. They were a Portuguese Freemasonry, so they had these crazy rituals and symbols and they built uh, this sanatorium uh, with a star, you know, I, I took a picture, but you barely can see that is a star, but it's like these seven point stars and the legend says that they bury all the tickets money on the center of the sanatorium because they were respectful people, so they were not going to use the money for other things rather than building this sanatorium. This next place, it's a sawmill. It's abandoned for more than 20 years. I want to talk about this because in Portugal, there's a lot of these sawmills uh, abandoned and working still because we work with a lot of wood. But this one in particular, it's, it was a little bit crazy to me because all the machines inside of the, the sawmill were manual. It was really, really old. It was, I think, one of the first sawmills in the area and the saddest part about this story is after the owner passed away his daughter didn't want to keep going with this business so she just closed this place and it's been abandoned since then and there's uh, some stories there this place had a lot of accidents and it's haunted and stuff because back then like the machines were not that protected as now so people would cut their hands and cut fingers in these huge machines so it has like this sad crazy story behind it I start photographing uh, little things that I found on this place because I just found it interesting the, the little details but what I found challenging not different but challenging on this place it was because 
everything was open so there was light everywhere so for a photographer I hate like the flares so it was really hard work to try to not get that in camera it was a really cool find and like I told you there's a lot of them in Portugal I'm gonna try to film at least one of them just to give you an experience of a Portuguese sawmill is like you know especially with all the machines inside I don't know why people leave everything there it's just I know it's like big machinery but it's there you know and it's just crazy to me so I maybe do one in the future stick around okay for this place I want to give first the history to for you to understand why I'm talking about this this was a school it's called Escola de Camões it was built in the neighborhood called Bairro do Camões it was built to teach the children of the people who lived inside of that neighborhood. The people that live inside of this neighborhood were workers for a company called CP, it's the Portuguese trains, and they work in the repairing of the trains and train tracks, and they had to build a school for their kids. And this dates back to 1883 when it starts to be built this whole neighborhood and school and throughout the years this place has been in disuse although there's two houses in this neighborhood I didn't pho photograph the neighborhood for privacy but there's two houses there are still people living inside their workers past workers they don't work in the the trained company anymore but they are living in there and in 2020 I've been there I didn't photograph it for respect but they are restoring all the neighborhoods in that area and they are restoring the school too so this is really amazing news because it's like another abandoned place being restored for a good cause because it's not only for workers that this place is going to be but for all peoples it's going to be rented houses so this is amazing news and they think the work it's gonna finish in in 2020 but because of covid this date may be extended to 2021 but it's really being finished and i'm not gonna do a video on this place this for me this place needs a lot of respect but this school it's so beautiful it's so traditional it's so old that i had to photograph it and this is the photos And the last place I want to talk about, which is another good news, it's the Vice Council's house. It's being restored. I think I told you in a past video, but I was not sure. I went there with Leslie and we saw the whole place being restored. It was a little bit weird because every furniture is still inside, like literally it's still there. It looked like they stopped the construction, but at least they are still cleaning and restoring the place because it was literally a shame like the royalty this was like a vice council's house like it, this is, was really a historic house and it was literally falling down and i'm so glad they pick up this place and now are doing something with him i just want to say this update to you if you want to check out the full video about this house i'm gonna leave the link down in the description or in the corner i filmed it with explomo so go check it out if you didn't see it So you reached the end of the video, thank you so much if you watched the whole way through. I really hope you liked these videos and if you did and you like my content and this type of videos, give it a big like. Comment down below if you would like for me to do the, those videos that I told you and comment what you think about this video. As always, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification to get notified every time I upload. Give me the camera, give me the camera. And I'll see you on the next one. Ciao! Welcome back to my channel. To the channel, funny. Comment. Olá, mano. Isto é coisa de primeiro ano, tu consegues. This is the th three. Quantos é que há? Welcome back to the channel. I'm in my parents, my grandparents. 
Mon monastery or monastir? Monastir? No, monastery. Monastery. Search it up. Jesus Christ. Welcome back to the channel. I mean my parent. Grandparents. Okay. Monastir, monastery. Leave in the comments because I don't know what's the right word. Let's keep going. Road work I have. Yeah, yeah, I, I sure hope it does. Monastery. Monastery, not even one, not even two. Monastery, okay, monastery. Basically a tram, lost. <clears throat> from where I, from where I, from what I read, from where I, from where, from what I read. From where, <laughs> from what I read. From what I what I read. This powder, this phonics. Okay. Most known has clean it with Oh my god, it gets louder. What the f can you please stop? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Most known as. Oh, I have something in my eye. <laughs> Let it go. Let it go. I'm gonna die fucking soon alone. <clears throat> Sanatoriums. Are you good? You have a seat now? <laughs> the best stuff. Can't stop. Misery. <laughs> Hi, my name is Daniel and I'm secretly Elvis Presley. I hope you're filming. <laughs> because he was like a million years I'm gonna die <laughs>